Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody, and thanks for uh, joining us on Celebrating Act 2. Uh, Art Kirsch and I are with our favorite television expert, Herbie J. Pilato. Herbie, good to see you again. Hey, Herbie. Hi, Art. Hi, John. Yeah, you know, a lot of the subjects, we always find some humor in just about everything, but uh, why don't we just go for the, for the mother load? Uh, one of the most humorous TV shows of ever, I think, was Laughing. Mm. And it was unique, it was groundbreaking, and yeah. you probably have forgotten more than I know about it, and I think I know quite a bit about it. Uh, what, what was Laughing all about? Well, really, I, I would say that Laughing began on Broadway <laughs> with a, a, a show called Hell's a Poppin, which then became a film in like 1941 with people like Elijah Cook Jr. and Martha Ray. And they, they did like, you know, essentially uh, different skits and whatnot. And Laughing just took the, uh, the blackout skit you know, to a new level. And it went on to make movie stars of, it, of its cast. You know, Lily Tomlin, Goldie Hawn, um, Judy Karn. She didn't make it as a movie star, but she became a star in her own right. Uh, Teresa Graves. Um, she went on to do Get Christy Love uh, for ABC, which was a, uh, a, a version of the, of the coffee-type black exploit, exploitative films that they made. Uh, in the 70s, but it, much different. So Laugh-In was hosted by Dan Rowan and Dick Martin. It was, uh, you know, there was also Alan Seuss. He was fantastic. Um, Artie Johnson, on and on. So many different regular characters. It was on Monday nights, NBC, it, for the, the longest time, starting in 68, I believe, to 1974. It was actually rebooted. In uh, later on in the 80s. Um, but I have to say, I never warmed up to laughing. To me, it wasn't cozy enough for me. Um, it was very political, which I didn't understand as a kid. So maybe that contributed to it. And they had, you know, certainly it was wonderful to see uh, the ladies in bikinis with painted bodies. That was different at the parties on the show. But there wasn't anything warm about it, and that's big for me. The show has to be warm and welcoming. So that's just my opinion. It's not gospel. Not this time. <laughs> well, you, you know, you forgot to mention somebody else who uh, they made, uh, Richard Nixon. Good. Soccer, oh, sure. to, soccer to him. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> well, I, I yeah, they had, they had the fickle finger of fate, which, by the way, they had showcased in the NBC studios when I was a page mm. at NBC and I'd give tours. And in one little glass case, they had the fickle finger or fatal other remnants or relics of NBC TV history. And I would point that out every time we'd pass it by. I'd point it out to the tour. And there's the fickle finger of fate from laughing. Uh, you know, what I find um, uh, kind of interesting, or should I say very interesting, <laughs> is that the writing for that show yeah. was uh, different and unique, and it was just a ton of one-liners that yeah. uh, some staff put together. Was there any any special standouts on the writing staff? I I'm gonna I'm gonna guess here, but I'm thinking maybe Chris Chris Beard was there in the beginning, and he went on to do you know Sunny and Cher, come and whatnot. We also forgot to mention Ruth Buzzy, terrific, terrific sketch actress who started on that show and went on to become a star. But yeah, the, the writing staff was, you know, was solid, of course, but uh, it, it just wasn't a show that I, 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 I favored. I didn't mean to surprise you with that, but, but that, that's, I, I wanted to address it because it was monumental in the history of television, no doubt. It was, you know, as you mentioned, it, it it featured Richard Nixon and and everybody wanted to do the show. It was like Batman. Everybody wanted to be on Batman. Everybody wanted to guest star on Batman. And if you were anybody who was anybody in the uh, late 60s and early 70s, you showed up on Laughing. 
Yeah, That's I think sure. even John didn't John Wayne. Uh, oh the, sure. Yeah. So. Uh, Absolutely. And, and that was yeah. sort of like the late the late night of uh, the decade or two later, where politicians and stars would go on and do silly things and maybe have whipped cream thrown at them and things like that. Uh, right. That I think that all sort of was laughing, uh, uh, and to some extent, making uh, uh, these untouchable stars far more human and likable than they might otherwise have been uh, when the Hollywood would, would determine who they're allowed to date and so on and so forth. They were just able to open up. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it was in many ways, it was a precursor, I think, to uh, Saturday Night Live. It might have started mm -hmm. and been inquired by Hell's a Poppin' on Broadway and, and, the, and the feature film and other things like, um, oh, what was it, Faces, Funny Faces or whatever. Uh, of Broadway, um, we forgot to mention. Was, of course, it was created by George Slater. <laughs> Just an amazing, you know, Gary Owen, who, who was the announcer. Yes, yeah. Herbie J, you bring up a good point, and that is uh, George Slater. Slater, Slater, um, was the genius behind it, as I recall. But it was called Rowan and Martin's Laugh In. What was Rowan and Martin's role in creating it? Did they? They got their name on the title. Did they? Is that just because they were hosts, or did they? Were they influential in in the creation of the show? They, I, I, I believe they had a strong hand in the writing as well, um, and they were just a great comedic team that that George, you know, just noticed and and thought, you know, they and they they'd be perfect for this because they were irreverent, you know, they were they were for television anyway, because television really isn't reflective of the time that it shows a particular show. It's usually a little bit late in that department. It's like a couple years later. Rowan and Martin, you know, were were uh, a team before that on the nightclub circuit and on TV and on guest spots. And then they just, you know, they, they laugh and made them a star, uh, made them stars. Mm. I don't remember, I don't... Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember laughing being overtly political like let's say um uh, the smothers brothers became oh god yeah no no the, the smothers brothers which by the way was genius it was a genius show i mean i looked at that for the first time since i was a kid i mean i didn't understand it as a kid but man oh man it was just hilarious and they did crazy things that really set out to be controversial they took laughing to a whole other level laughing wanted to stay on the air you know <laughs> laughing wanted to give you something um they wanted they perceived the situation in a lighter mode the smothers brothers was humorous but they were they were more serious with their jabs at what was going on in the world laughing didn't take it that seriously laughing didn't want to hit you over the head that seriously as the Smothers Brothers did. Yeah. It was a groundbreaking show, that's for sure. It uh, it changed television, I think. Did it not? Um, I don't know if it changed television, but it definitely was unique. Uh, it definitely was unique. It was on the same night in the same network as The Monkees, which had their own irreverence. Mm -hmm. So it was a perfect fit for that series. Yeah. Um, you know, it was it was just a, a really a unique night. Opposite, by the way, on CBS, there was the Lucy Show. Here's Lucy, um, wow. Doris Day, and Carol Burnett was on at 10 p.m. for a while there. Andy Griffith. So to hold your own up against those shows, that strong CBS lineup, which was probably one of the strongest in TV history, uh, I'd say they did pretty well. And they also, as as we mentioned earlier, made stars of pretty much every one of their yeah. cast members. And the, who, the 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 extras or the 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 semi regulars became bigger stars than the hosts. Mm. Yes, you know it was kind yeah. of interesting also that, uh, and I think probably it's what made it really unique uh, was that you didn't have to get involved in thinking about watching something from beginning to end, a story arc. It was a whole bunch of these little skits. Yeah. Okay, they stood yes. on their own. Uh, every... Oh, there was no story arc there, that's for <laughs> sure. So uh, yeah. I think that uh, they began 
uh, and not to 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 uh, compare them because the the production value was so much higher with this. But uh, you had a whole bunch of things after, like the dollar uh, ninety eight beauty show and things like that. It just it was just so, yeah. You didn't have to pay attention to anything other than a quick gag here or there, and it moved on. As opposed well, to you know, it, getting involved it, it, in a one-hour well, drama. It's funny you say that, Art, because a lot of comedy in recent years, probably beginning with Seinfeld, TV comedy. If you look at Seinfeld, they don't, in the first few seasons of the show, it's very slow moving. By the fifth or sixth season, it became quick skits, every two different scenes, every you know, a few minutes, which certainly was taken to the end degree with friends. So that kind of began with laugh in, you know, and then it just transmuted from the variety show format to the sitcom uh, format, which today you don't see a lot of sitcoms with scenes that have any longer time than maybe three or four minutes. They just don't know how to make long scenes anymore. I'm not saying I'm for that. I'm saying that's how the sitcom has changed, which kind of now you made me see this really began with a variety show like Laughing. Very, very astute observation. But as we close, I want to take umbrage and uh, and and say that I think you guys are wrong. I, I think Laughing <laughs> did have story arcs because I always wanted to see how that old guy on the bench would deal with Ruth Buzzy every every skit. So there you go. What's the next skit? What's going to happen next? That John, finally, finally, me. something you can relate to. That, that an old guy on a bench. That is that is <laughs> a, that an arc. You're right. Those mm -hmm. were arc stories. <laughs> well, Herbie, this has been great. Right, and uh, it is always nice to paraphrase Lily Tomlin. Uh, that uh, is this the person I have been speaking to? Yes. <laughs> One it's, it's Herbie J. One wingy dingy, right? <laughs> so there's a lot to, that we all got out of it. So thank you for taking us back on uh, memory lane for a couple of laughs, uh, as uh, you want to do from time to time. A couple of laugh ins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See you later, guys. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.